Coming up on Ag Week TV, a proposed large-scale hog operation in the small town of Buffalo, North Dakota is a huge topic of discussion. Our warm weather is a problem for beet processors, but a boon for some livestock producers. And a large gift from CHS to NDSU will help students better understand risk management and trading. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. The warm spring weather is causing problems for sugar beet processing plants, but it's offering an unexpected benefit to livestock producers. When beet piles get too warm, the beets spoil and have to be disposed of. Mindac Beet Cooperative usually sells beet pulp and tailings to livestock producers for feed, but as Mickle Pates reports, this year they're giving some of them away, chipped whole beets at no charge just to make some use of them before they spoil. This year's warm temperatures have created a problem for processing sugar beets, but have created an unexpected boon for cattle producers next door. Because we're always looking at trying to get feed costs down per day for cows. I mean, cattle prices have been high, but yet it's, it's still a fairly tight margin. Anthony Schmidt is a feed manager for Gibbon Farm and Ranch at Milner. They custom feed about 3,500 cows and calves. Some of these can get pretty big. They normally use a grass, hay, and straw mix with some corn pulp and beet pulp and tailings mixed in. That's what we mainly use it for. But this year they're getting something extra. In the place of, of corn silage. Whole sugar beets sliced into chips. Anytime you can feed a byproduct that, you know, is this waste to somebody else, at least you can run it through a cow and get some nutritional value out of it. It's a big benefit. Not only would the beets have gone to waste, it would have cost money to dispose of them. So it's a win-win for Mindac and producers. For a number of, of people who are uh, getting this product, uh, it's going to help them out considerably when it comes to being able to come out in the black or maybe not so far in the red this year. And unfortunately, that's part of agriculture. Some years you just try to not be as deep in the red as you could have been. It's good to have livestock to pick up some of the beets in a year like this, but co-ops are hoping most of them will go through the factory. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. Alan Larson says this might not happen again. Mindac is adding more venting for beet piles before next year. Sugar beets are a staple crop in the Red River Valley. Jonathan Knudsen attended the recent International Sugar Beet Institute in Grand Forks and has more on the biggest issues currently facing the sugar industry. Sugar beets aren't like most other crops. They're not bought and sold at the local grain elevator and they're not widely grown. American Crystal Sugar, based in Moorhead, Minnesota, is the nation's largest sugar producer. We have resolution to the biggest threat that we've had for a long time, which is a trade dispute with Mexico. It's not working perfectly. It's working pretty well, but there are some, some, some minor revisions that we'd like to see made that will make it work better. I recently spoke to uh, you know, cane growers in, in the South, and they're not jumping up and down just because a couple candy manufacturers have uh, 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 you know, want to switch from GMO beets to uh, non-GMO cane because they know in a couple of years they could well have a variety there. That's an issue that could continue. I do not see that going away. This year, this 2015-16 uh, crop year has been hurt a little bit by the warm winter that we've had, but we assume that Minnesota and North Dakota will always have cold weather and that, that will mean that we'll store the crop and, uh, and deliver good returns to our growers. The 16 beet crop isn't even in the ground yet, but given current prices, the financial outlook is promising. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. North Dakota soybean farmers recently learned about the challenges facing their biggest competitors, Brazilian farmers. Farming in Brazil was one of the topics at the North Dakota Soybean Council's Marketing and Risk Management Seminar held recently in Fargo. Reporter Tracy Frank is here to fill us in. Tracy, what are some of the challenges they're facing in Brazil? Shana Walter Lanza, a graduate student studying agricultural economics at NDSU, is from Brazil. 
He says transportation is one of his country's biggest challenges. Transportation accounts for 40 percent of the price of grain in Brazil, compared to 10 percent in the U.S. Trucks are the primary transportation method, but more than 80 percent of roads in Brazil are not paved. Because of this, 2 to 3 percent of soybeans fall from the trucks during transport. It can also take up to two weeks for trucks to unload. In addition, Lanza says railroads are inefficient and prioritize iron ore over grain. Ports are also expensive and slow, with typical wait times of 60 to 70 days. You need to know about what your biggest competitor is doing, so you know what they're doing and then you can get a game plan to try to do better. Brazil and the United States are neck to neck when it comes to soybean exports. If they do streamline things better, they're going to be a true, true competitor in the market where right now I think a large amount of production makes them a competitor, but if their efficiencies increase, we're really going to see it affect our markets. Other issues Brazilian farmers face are they don't have the infrastructure to store grain or the money to build nice bins. Lanza says corruption is also rampant. Tracy, is Brazil working on improving transportation for farmers? They are, Shana. Brazil is working on a more than 1,000-mile road known as the Soybean Highway. But Lanza says progress is slow. He says 70 percent of the 1,000-mile road is still unpaved. Sounds like they still have a lot of work to do. Thanks, Tracy. Up next on Ag Week TV, big crowds show up to talk about a proposed hog operation near Buffalo, North Dakota. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Drainage Solutions is experienced in the tri-state area. Their skilled employees will design, implement, and maintain the best drainage system available. Drainage Solutions uses state-of-the-art equipment along with the best data resources available to design a drainage system that they guarantee will be both efficient and cost-effective. Whether you're considering drain tile for the first time or adding to your existing drainage system, let Drainage Solutions design the most appropriate site-specific drainage for your needs. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Total Ag offers the latest and greatest in seeds from Legend and Wensman, featuring the newest in cutting edge seed technologies and access to every genetic and seed trait platform. Total Ag can help you choose the seed that's right for your specific field, leading the way to better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag Industries by phone or visit totalag.com. When there's work to be done, water and mud can't stand in your way. So plow right through in a pair of muck boots from Home of Economy. Made from neoprene and heavy-duty rubber, muck boots are designed for total comfort with a snug fit and built-in arch support. So you stay dry and strong on your feet. And with options like steel toe and arctic insulation, you'll always find the right muck boots at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. The state is always going to need milk, and it's critical that North Dakotans get milk from within their state. Being able to find a good, reliable source for capital is a real challenge. Senate Bill 2351, it's about utilizing a management tool on hog and dairy farms to partner and incorporate with our neighbors or other individuals so that we can build a business. And the more that you can do that, the better off our entire farming community gets to be. A proposed large-scale hog farm in the small community of Buffalo, North Dakota is bringing people out in droves. Farmers, nearby neighbors, and community members have all come to find out more about this proposed project and voice their opinions. 
The usually quiet main drag was like a big city parade as people from near and far rolled in to be heard at a public meeting. The proposed application for approval put on by state officials, some for and many against the proposed hog farm. Uh, public hearing after the informational meeting. Rolling Green Family Farms wants to put up a 9,000 head operation just a couple miles southeast of town, and that has several residents concerned. And there are a lot of people in our community who don't know about the pros and the cons and so they're trying to be neutral and I totally support that. We're hoping that they will learn something today if they come and there are those who may benefit economically from it but we are really struggling to find out where that economic gain is because we feel we are going to give up so much quality of our life here for not very much economic impact. If this was so good for Buffalo in the state of North Dakota, why aren't more people involved? Craig Went lives a couple miles from the proposed site. And where they're actually planning on spreading the manure is as close to a half mile away from my house, 300 acres. And so for the research that I have done, what this does to communities and property values, obviously with health issues and raising two young girls, I'm very concerned about what this will do. Members of the North Dakota Pork Producers Council served up pulled pork sandwiches in effort to show their support for the operation and to help calm fears. Our sole purpose is to promote pork in North Dakota. Seth Bacon is the current president and also manages a 5,000 head hog farm in Grand Forks County. It employs about 20 full-time people. When our farm was first started, there was a little pushback from some of the, the people in the community just because they didn't know what they didn't know. Till now, 18 years later, we are a, I, I would, in my opinion, a valued, respected member of our, the business community. And like I said, we bring a lot of economic value to, the, um, to our town, the grocery stores, the gas stations, the hardware stores, the auto parts stores. You know, we all spend our money there. This will be the sixth one here in the state. Craig Jeralemic, a pork producer from Forest River, North Dakota, and past president of the National Pork Council, says the pork industry in North Dakota needs to grow. He says this planned operation will be a boost for farmers, especially those who raise corn. And the basis, it could be as much as 50 cents or even a dollar a bushel. I mean, it could have a quite a bit of basis. It'll be more of a local impact because grain won't travel very far. But as they know, as we start to add different operations, then that, that area will, will widen and uh, just creates more local demand for grain. I guess you have to look at what an ethanol plant. We have ethanol plants in this state, and those farmers that are near that ethanol plant, they understand what that means. He says these operations are usually met with plenty of opposition. And I've actually worked with other groups similar to this uh, in uh, Botno and Edmore and in the Kandu area. And uh, fortunately, we were successful with that. Those operations have been operating for a good seven to ten years now uh, with no, no effects. Uh, that's one thing that, you know, we had the same... Uh, negative that you see here today, but the truth is none of that ever comes true. It, it's more of a scare tactic than it is the truth. And joining us now with his thoughts on this proposal is Mikkel Pates. Uh, Mikkel, you've been out covering lots of stories on this. What are your feelings on this? Well, North Dakota is a big grain state and we export lots of grain to places where they make them into uh, uh, livestock and into the food we eat. And so it's always mystified me that we don't have more livestock and this is the one of the attempts to put a modern scale livestock enterprise into this community. And in this case it's a it sounds like a lot of hogs but it's a, a sow unit that is not unusual in its size it's just that it happens to want to be here. Yeah. Are you surprised at some of the people that are opposing this facility? No, I think people are always worried about change in the first place. They're also worried about uh, maybe they have some experience with uh, smelling livestock. and uh, But there has been quite little of it around here, so their experiences may not be all that uh, current. And, uh, you know, there are bad actors in the world of livestock, just like there's in every enterprise, but that doesn't mean they all are. And so basically I've written that people need to give things like this a chance and to listen to what it really is and not just what they imagine it might be. Okay, very good. Uh, Ag Week reporter Mikkel Pates, thanks for uh, joining us here today in Buffalo. Oh, you're very welcome. It's looking more like spring every day. Meteorologist John Wheeler is up next with your agri-weather forecast. And later, we'll tell you about an important new partnership between CHS and NDSU. 
Quality is not a word we take lightly. From the materials we use down to the details, it's always been about building something the right way. That's how you know it's a true Minn Kota window. Grain Max has over 25 years experience and we know there's not a lot of time to get the harvest off the field and safely in the bin. The Grain Max telescopic swing auger is retractable, allowing the operator to telescopically and hydraulically position the auger hopper under the trailer. The operator never has to climb under the trailer to wrestle the swing hopper into position. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. As a manufacturer, if you don't actually farm, there's so many places where you go wrong if you really don't have a true gut feeling for the end result. From the seed placement, fertilizer placement, packing, weigh scales, variable rates, everything that we have is put there to make you more money. At the end of the day, we guarantee that with Super Seed Guarantee. Tightline Drainage is the Red River Valley's most trusted name for tile. Tightline uses the Port Hydromax plow and also Port Hydromax trenchers for installing our laterals and mainline accurately. The science behind drain tile proves healthier plant growth and greater yields. Tightline Drainage also sells pipes, fittings, tiling plows, Landau tillage equipment, and more. Tightline Drainage is owned and operated by experienced agricultural professionals who understand the need for progressive agricultural practices. Call Tightline Drainage for a free drainage design today at 701-235-1900. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work, and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. I look down the line and I see every step this window goes through and the people that help create it. I love working with a team that truly cares about helping make true Minn Kota windows. Weather portion of Ag Week. Now it's the most exciting time of the year for weather, really, in many ways. Late March and April, which is a funny way of really saying that it's the most difficult time to forecast the weather. Let's start with the basics. U.S. Drought Monitor. Drought continues. California, the deep level uh, soil moisture profile extremely dry, although they've had some rain. And across North Dakota, things are fairly dry, with most of North Dakota either dry or in moderate drought. Nothing severe or anything like that. Just a lot of fairly dry soil. Well, what does that mean? That's the deep moisture profile. When we actually look at soil conditions in the topsoil around the United States, this is more a reflection of recent rainfall. Pacific Northwest is wet. Northern California is wet. Southern California is not really wet, but it's not so parched because they've had rains down here. It's just that the overall moisture profile in Southern California, they're still way behind after several years of drought. Much of the Southern Plains, the winter wheat areas, not too bad off really. In fact, part of the panhandle is fairly wet. A little bit dry in the uh, southeastern United States, and that spills up into the southern part of the Corn Belt. And then an interesting dichotomy where it goes from dry to quite wet through the central part of the north of the upper Midwest, then to fairly dry again across the North Dakota. That dry, wet, dry setup going into spring makes for some interesting prospects as we approach planting season in the northern plains. Well, what is the weather going to do for us this week? Although the El Nino is beginning to show signs of fading, it's the southern branch of the jet stream that still has most of the energy. The polar jet is fairly weak. Watch this surge, this bright orange to pink as that moves out over the next several days. That's going to likely be a storm. Severe weather in the south, maybe in the upper Midwest, possibly northern plains somewhere up in this region. There are signs there could be a rain to snow system sometime late next week or early next weekend. We'll have to watch for that. If that does happen, there would be the potential for some snow in some parts of the northern plains. Looks wet still Pacific Northwest, fairly dry or just light showers. Most of Southern California as I mentioned, much of the, uh, the Mid-South is going to be stormy this upcoming week. Probably some tornadoes once again. And a chance of moderate to heavy rain or snow. Not 
sure how far west this will be. It may be another storm for Wisconsin and Iowa, but we'll have to keep our eye on that possibility. The last, uh, the last week of the uh, forecast, which will be the first full week of April, is looking usual, wet in the Pacific Northwest, stormy in the Deep South, and colder and drier here in the northern plains. I'm fairly convinced the first week of April will be the coldest weather we've had relative to average in some time. A cold start to April. I do believe warm and dry weather will return before the month is over. Prospects for a warmer, drier summer still looking somewhat likely. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and Endangered Species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living, it's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment, it's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, with proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Prairie Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high-velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts, and every bean counts, so you can count on Prairie. It's time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. CHS is the nation's leading farmer-owned cooperative. NDSU is one of the leading land-grant research universities in the country. This week, the two entities continued their tradition of partnership, holding CHS Day at NDSU. CHS leaders, who were also NDSU alumni, held a classroom takeover, exploring global market risk and volatility scenarios and sharing their experiences in commodity trading. They're investing in us students, especially with these research opportunities for us. Um, they're giving, a lot, giving us a lot to look forward to and getting us really excited about being in the agriculture industry. Around the globe, and, I, and I've traveled a lot of different places, people know NDSU and, and how valuable the education here is in agriculture. And to share it with students and to give them a little excitement about, about the industry that they're in, is just really, it's really fun and, and kind of pleasing personally because I was, I was there at one point. CHS also continued its investment in the school with a $2.5 million grant to create an endowed chair in risk management and trading. It's the largest of many CHS donations to the school. Risk is inherent in farming and agriculture, and so with this state-of-the-art opportunity, we know students are going to be well prepared for a career, whether it's back on the farm or working in agriculture here in the United States or on a global platform. In 2011, CHS donated $250,000 to NDSU for developing the commodity trading room in Berry Hall and has given more than $100,000 in scholarships to NDSU students, among many other donations. GMOs have become a hotly debated topic. 
Ag Week's Jonathan Knudsen gives his thoughts on the issue after this. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. The North Dakota Soybean Council invests checkoff dollars to increase soybean demand, increase yields, and open new markets. The soybean checkoff has resulted in stronger prices and higher yielding varieties. Checkoff dollars fund research to bring solutions to farmers' greatest production challenges. Global demand for North Dakota soybeans for human consumption, animal feed, and commercial use has never been greater. Checkoff dollars, investing in a profitable future for North Dakota soybean farmers. Hi, I'm Amy Anderson, pro golfer. I'm grateful for the small town values I learned growing up in Oxbow, North Dakota. Those values led me to great success at NDSU and a great year on the LPGA Tour, but I'll keep striving to become the top women's golfer in the world. Let me tell you about some other folks from small North Dakota, Minnesota towns who have proven themselves to be big time pros. The market advisory firm Progressive Ag of Fargo, North Dakota. For the past eight years, they've consistently beaten Chicago Board of Trade firms by a lot. In corn, they beat the other top marketing firms in the country by 65 cents a bushel. For 100,000 bushel corn farmer, that's $65,000 a year better than the number two firm. For a 40,000 bushel soybean farmer, over a dollar a bushel extra, $40,000 better than the number two firm. So team up with the big time pros from Progressive Ag and let them put their North Dakota values to work for you. One of the most hotly debated issues in agriculture these days concerns the safety of GMO crops. Jonathan Knudsen offers us his thoughts on this divisive issue. In my job, I meet many different people who hold many different views. Recently, I visited on the phone with a California woman who strongly opposes GMO food. We had a pleasant conversation. I listened respectfully and with an open mind. As a journalist, I stay impartial and objective. As a commentator, I'm supposed to say what I think. So, I'll say here, I disagree with her. I think the preponderance of scientific evidence shows GMO food is safe. Having said that, I commend her. We live in a free society. People should promote their views. She's doing that with passion and persistence. Are you on the other side of the GMO debate? If so, you should be passionate and persistent too. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.